G'day, in this little video we're going to explain the process of doping to produce an extrinsic semiconductor from an intrinsic semiconductor. This is intrinsic at the moment, it's just silicon completely undoped. And you can see, uh, first of all, this beautiful regular crystalline lattice-like arrangement of all of the, uh, all of the atoms. Lattice like garden lattice, not the, uh, not the uh, uh, dessert treat. Uh, and you can see it's made of silicon atoms, which have got four electrons in their valence shell, in their outermost shell here. And uh, when we slot them into the lattice, the reason the lattice is all kind of nice is that because they're sharing these electrons, if you look at any one silicon atom, it looks like it's got a complete outer shell. It's got eight electrons in its outer shell, which is the lowest energy state for silicon to be in. So it's really happy about that. But it means that there's actually no free electrons to carry charge through silicon. So silicon in its pure state won't just conduct a current. You've got to do something um, special to that. You've actually got to apply some energy somehow, maybe through photons of light or thermal energy. Um, but at the moment, there's no free charge carriers to move. That's an intrinsic semiconductor. Let's dope it. And what we mean by doping is we mean we, we add some impurity. We add, and usually the impurity is in very, very small concentrations, in parts per million. In this case, we're going to add an atom of boron. Now, boron has only got three electrons in its outermost shell. Remember, it's got one less proton as well, so it's still electrically neutral. We're going to insert that into our lattice and see what happens. Okay, so that is now sitting in the lattice. It's only at a very small concentration so that the general structure of the lattice work is preserved. If we had too much bore on it, it'd distort the whole lattice. And you can see here that at this point here, this silicon atom would really like to have an electron. It's kind of missing an electron. It, it is, as it were, as though there was a hole waiting for an electron to come and fill it. Because then silicon would have eight electrons in its valence shell. That's a lower energy state, and so, um, you know, if it was possible to put an electron there, we would put an electron there because it would fall, if you like, in a little energy well into that hole. We call that a hole because it's a place where an electron would like to be in the lattice. Now, if we do the opposite thing over on this matrix here, take out a silicon atom out of the, out of the lattice work, and we're going to add in some arsenic. Now, arsenic has five electrons in its outer shell, in its valence shell. Remember, because it's got an extra electron, it's got an extra proton as well, so it's still electrically neutral. We're going to insert it into the lattice work, and that hasn't changed the lattice work. The lattice work is not changed in its overall electrical charge. It's still overall electrically neutral. But now we've got this extra electron, as it were, sitting in, in excess of the demands required. Let's just uh, ungroup all of this. Uh, in, in excess of the, uh, the requirements of that, uh, of that lattice. Okay. So now, where's our little extra, extra electron? He's kind of free to move because he can move around without um, taking away an electron out of uh, that complete eight in the outer shell that the silicon wants. Of course, that electron might bump into this electron here and cause this electron to start you know, wandering off through the lattice and it might bump into that electron and uh, likewise cause this one to wander through the lattice and he might hit that electron. But that's okay because now this electron is free to leave because this silicon atom here has still got eight electrons in its outermost shell. The same thing's happening across on this side here. This electron, just because of thermal energy, remember they're just wandering through the lattice because their thermal energy is gonna, can move and now the hole has moved. This electron here might kind of wander up and fill that uh, position there, which means now that the hole is, is gonna appear there. So what we've got now is we've got charge carriers, things that can carry charge. On this side here, we've got holes that can migrate through the lattice. Well, actually, it's the electrons that are moving, but the electrons, by moving, the electron effectively moves the hole. So it's as though the holes can wander through that lattice work uh, and be able to carry charge. On the, this side over here, which we're going to call an n-type extrinsic semiconductor, so we've got p-type on the left and n-type on the right, um, it's, it's got a free electron which has gone missing. Where on earth? Here he is. Uh, here's our little free electron who can wander around, bump in and you know, create another free electron. So over here we've got things that can carry charge. Now we've got an electron here which has now pushed, it's been pushed up into the conduction um, energy band. So it's now able to be a conductor, can move charge through that silicon. Uh, and we're going to call that an n-type semiconductor. It's really important to remember that even though this is the p-type on the left here, it's still electrically neutral. There's still a proton for every electron. Same as on the n-type semiconductor. It's electrically neutral uh, as a whole because there's a, the same number of protons and electrons. But what we've created is an electron that's now been pushed up and it's free to move. And on this side, we've got a hole that's able to freely move through that. So we've now got charge carriers of two different types. And something really interesting happens when we put a p-type bit of silicon 
right next door to an N-type piece of silicon and create a PN junction. I'm going to talk about that in the next video.